Okay guys, an emergency project, a repair project popped up today. A friend of mine had a friend of theirs over using the jet ski and when they went to put the lift back up, they screwed up and they went way too high with the lift platform. That's the two forks that hold the jet ski. And you can see it can only go so high before it hits the part of the aluminum right there with the arrow. And that's exactly what they did. They put so much pressure once it hit that point that it busted off the motor right here. The entire housing got cracked. And it's amazing it was even hanging up still. Take a look at this side. Quite the mess. And I had to put this cable on here, ratcheting tie down, to hold up that jet ski just in case that part did crack off completely, which luckily it didn't. So in order to get this project started, the first thing I'm going to have to do is take the tension off the cable. I'm going to release that tension and hopefully these straps can hold that six, seven hundred pounds while I work on replacing the housing. Okay, let's get started. Right here is a look at the replacement housing. And just to let you know, there's going to be some noise. I'm on a waterway right now. You can hear the water sloshing. There's somebody pressure washing a roof. It's really out of my control, but hopefully you can hear everything I'm saying. This is the replacement housing. This one busted off right over here. There's nothing holding it. It's just resting on here. Amazingly, it didn't fall off. These bolts are gonna come off. And then I'm going to be removing the spool with the cable unbolting it right here where it goes on to the gearbox put this back on and reconnect everything let me give you a quick look underneath right over here so you can see what the spool looks like it's jammed against the aluminum on this upright part the first thing I'm going to be doing is turning off power to the boat lift and disconnecting the cable going to the motor. I also placed a cushion on the jet ski rail just in case it's too heavy. When I release tension from the cable, it'll end up falling onto that cushion. I'm going to have a friend hold it, but there's always a chance it might fall. You can see the cover off now, and I'm going to be labeling everything so it goes back exactly the way it was. When I reinstall the motor, I'm also going to replace this connector. So what I decided to do is remove the end that covers the fan and I'm just going to gently rotate this in the right direction until all the tension has been removed from that cable. It's nothing more than a worm gear. Right here is the shaft coming down and it turns a larger one right in here. Let me turn this now and take the tension off. Okay, have my friend turn it here. And as he's turning it, you can see the spool is rotating and it's taking the tension off very nicely and very slowly. In a matter of a minute, it should be loose enough to lift off. Now you can see the whole thing is shaking. All the weight is being held by the straps. Keep going a little bit more. If you see, if you can maybe lift it off. place it on this cushion. Let me see how loose it is under here. Yeah, it's very it's loose. It's all, yeah, it's all off. And this part right here is... Holding it still? Yes, hanging up just a little bit there. We keep pulling the cable. Keep going. All right, you can feel it coming off. Straps look good. going. I think, I think you'll have enough to take it off now. See if you can carefully lift it up and off. Wow, look at that mess. Holy shit. Ah, look at that. What a mess. And you can see how busted that is. And this is all that's left on this side. My assistant did a very good job. Okay, let me take these off. And there's a boat coming, so you're going to have to deal with the noise, unfortunately. Oh, 
some of these are tight. I changed the spool on this about a year ago because it was rusted out. I took this entire lift in, including the piling, about 15 years ago. Okay. See the end cover coming off nicely. All right, I greased it well. And there's a look at the inside of the cover. Now before I keep working on this, what I want to do is take off all the broken pieces on the lift itself. So let's take a closer look at that now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is remove these two bolts on the top, and then there's one further down in the center. I don't know if you can see it or not. The lighting's not that great. There's the bottom one. Okay, this is the plate after it's been removed. And the bolts were in excellent condition. I cleaned them up as you'll see in a minute. And here's what it looks like on here. That's all wire brushed. And these are the bolts. Now let's go back to the motor and start removing the spool. In order to remove the housing, you're going to have to remove the spool. And this process will be very handy if you have a spool that's rusted out and you'd like to know how to change it. Basically, you're going to take the jet ski off the lift or the boat off the lift. And once you do that, all the weight will be off this cable, allowing you to very easily replace this spool. To get started, we're going to have to go to the other end of this housing. Okay, you're going to have to remove the four bolts right here. Let me do that, and I'll be right back. And this is what it looks like underneath with the cover removed. Let me wipe off all this garbage under here. Wipe it all off. It's a bearing right there. And that's grease that I packed about a year ago, which I'll put back at the very end. Now it's going to happen, the shaft right here is going to slide through this bearing once this clip has been removed, out the other side. Sometimes you might have a problem, you can take a socket, place it just over this, and tap, and it should be able to go all the way through. Now let me get the tool to remove the clip. Okay, put the tool in there. And, there we go. Put that back the same way you found it off to the side. Now I'm going to take a socket like you see right here. It's slightly smaller than the shaft diameter and I'm going to tap until it starts to move and then I can grab the spool as it slides out the other direction. If you've never slid this out of the bearing before, very good idea to apply penetrating oil. Give it a light tap, let it sit for a while and then you can try what I'm about to show you. You're going to take a socket, slightly smaller, and then you're going to tap, tap, tap and you might have to hit it fairly hard, but don't get carried away. And you'll see the space start to narrow between here and the bearing. And you're going to continue to hammer until it slides all the way through. Okay, it's moving in a little bit. It's going to be easier for you to do this off camera. Once it starts going in, I'll come right back. Okay, to get this into a shady area, what I ended up doing is disconnecting the cable from the spool. The cable from the spool is held on with a set screw right here. Once that's disconnected, you can take the cable off the spool. Now, if you have trouble getting the shaft to slide through the gearbox, you can also try using a large bolt, place it right in the center, and tap with a short-handled sledge or a hammer. And if that doesn't work, you want to be very careful because you do not want to mushroom the end of the shaft. So if it doesn't move, then what you can do is use a puller like you see right here. You can rent these for free at auto parts stores. And you're going to use two bolts, one in the middle on top, one on the bottom. And you're going to use the hole here, hole here, any opposite holes. And you're going to tighten that down and use this to push the shaft through the gearbox. Now we're going to take a look on the opposite side. You're going to see the four bolts where the housing was and the pieces that were shattered I removed already. So let me show you the opposite side and then we're going to start installing the new gearbox cover. Okay, here's the pieces from the housing that was bolted right on here. We're going to take the bolts out and I'm going to install the new housing now. Here's the new one, all ready to go, very nice.
get that right into position. Okay, it's one. Let me get all four in, and I'll be right back. Okay, the gearbox is laying on the ground, and as you can see, the new housing has been bolted onto the gearbox. Now the next step, we're going to apply some grease inside the keyway here, as well as the opening where the shaft is going to go, and we're going to insert the spool. Okay, everything's been greased, and let's insert the spool now. Should go in fairly easily, I hope. Get it in the right spot. There it goes. All right, let's line the key up, which should be right there. Now I'm going to push this down. I'm actually going to tap very slightly right over here on the top. I'm going to place a socket in the center and gently tap down. It should drop all the way into position. And when it does, you'll be able to go to the opposite side, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Reinstall the retaining ring and put the cover back on that protects the retaining ring and the other side of the bearing. Okay, on the opposite side, you can see it's getting there. It's about 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths of an inch from coming out the other side. It needs to come out by about 3 or 4 millimeters and I'll show you on the other side of the spool when it makes contact you'll know it's all the way in. So let me keep tapping. Alright, going well over here. The other end I'm striking it with the head of this bolt right in the center of the shaft should not mushroom. If it does, you could always take a mill file and very gently round it off again. But be very careful. There's no reason to mushroom the end. Okay, the shaft of the spool is now fully inserted into the gearbox. You can see a little bit sticks out. And using the retaining ring pliers, like you see right over here, it'll open or close depending on how you connect them. I installed the retaining ring. That's back in position. I'm now going to put the cover back on the very end, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like on the other side, right over here where the spool is, when this is fully seated to end up like this. Okay, the cover has now been replaced on this end. Let's take a look over here now. I want to show you what it looks like when the shaft is fully seated. So let's take a look over here. Right over here, between the housing and the pulley, the shaft is larger in diameter here and it's a little thinner where it slides inside the gearbox. So when you look in here, you should see that the shaft is the same diameter going all the way in when the shaft is fully inserted and there's enough space on the end of the shaft to put the retaining ring back in. Now I'm going to put the end cap on the housing for the spool. Some of the waterproof marine grease has been applied to the shaft as well as the hole in the cover. Should go down. Yep, it's all the way down already. Perfect. Now I'm going to reinstall the four bolts and we're going to go on to the next step. Okay, the bolts are tightened down on this cover. Let's take a look at the other end where the fan is now. Okay, this cover has three screws that hold it onto the top of the motor here to protect the fan. And I made a reference line with a little scratch before I took it off. So this goes exactly like you see right over here. Tighten that down, on to the next step. Okay, I'm now going to lift up the entire unit, line up the holes right here, insert the bolts, secure it, and then we're going to go on to the next step. Alright, that's tight. I got one more bolt, bottom center, and then we're going to go on to hooking up the power and connecting up the cable to the spool. This is the old connector. It snapped off. The other piece was in here. Picked up this new liquid tight connector for the cable. Tighten this down around the cable. This will be inserted and I'll tighten it down with the lock ring and apply silicone sealant on the outside. Let me do that and I'll be right back. Tighten down the ring. Good. Press around the cable. Excellent. Okay, this is all wired up. Put the cover on. Okay, now let's connect up the cable to the spool. 
And right here you can see the cable going through the spool into the connector and I tightened down the set screw. Okay, now what I'm going to do is before I raise the motor up, I'm going to pull down on the cable and keep the tension on it as it winds up. Here we go. It is now fully wound up. Let me show you what it looks like underneath. And then I'm going to raise the lift up just a little bit to take the tension off the strap so I can release it. From this angle you can see the cable. It's going to tighten up. It's going to take the tension off the straps. Then I'll be able to remove the straps. There you go. Good. Perfect. We take those off and we'll lower it down and see if it works good all the way down and back up. Okay, lower it down. Working very nice, very smooth. You can stop it. Okay, now we're going to take it back up. Perfecto. Okay, let's take it for a quick spin.